Well, 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 fish and freaks. Welcome on back to the channel. This is a brand new truck and we're gonna be talking about that in just a second. But let me just say, we are back from the Great Northern Dangle, uh, one of the best smallmouth fishing experiences of my life. If you guys haven't watched that series yet, I will link it down below. I got these dadgum birds. Y'all go, go get out of here. Some birds are just nesting up up in the tree house and it is just hotter than a daggum toaster oven down here in texas man i mean it is like sweltering to go out and bass fish during the middle of the day <laughs> that's a toughie so if you're new to the channel or inquiring about uh, the duramax i've done some other videos with some issues that i have had with them i'll go over that in just a second um today we're just kind of vlogging taking a tour of the new rig and why i have it so three or four times i had um, manifold issues, transmission, just throwing codes. It was going into the shop, um, basically straight out of the gate, having having problems. And then this last week that we were filming, or Guggen Week, it was like right after I got back from uh, my Northern Dangle trip. I had some other guys in the truck. Uh, Lojo was with me. One of our producers was with, was with me. Somebody else was in the truck. It was loaded down. We were. Uh, we didn't we didn't have a boat trailer attached we were driving back from somewhere and it felt like we like ran over something it was like Doo -doo -doo -doo. in the world was that everybody was it was late you know we'd been filming all day like well maybe you hit something in the road and i was like I, I swear i didn't see anything and then the next day i hooked the boat up we were towing it i started going up these little slight inclines and it was like right when the truck wanted to, to downshift it was like Doo -doo -doo. and and then i could see clearly i was not running over anything everybody in the truck felt it and we were like whoa that is something with the transmission kept happening along the trip you know we got there we were able to fish and then on the way back it started happening again and then i just i parked it i was at the guggen hq just left it there you know we were filming and then i drove it home with without uh without a trailer hooked up to it and it really it started doing it really bad and then it went into limp mode which is if any of y'all have ever had a, you know, a diesel engine that's gone into limp mode, it basically restricts uh, your speed, get the gearing, it, it kind of goes into a safe program mode. Definitely shouldn't ride around on it very long, but I was lucky I was only like five miles from my house when it went into that. Luckily y'all, I got it in my driveway, put it in park, it was good. I just knew that better not drive that truck anymore. Next morning, called my closest Chevy dealer, happens to be classic Chevrolet over there in Grapevine also happens to turn out their service department uh one of the guys over there he watches watches the videos like he already knew a lot of the issues they were like yeah i mean this is this is the last problem you're gonna have just come in we'll we'll come pick it up and we'll we'll take care of you and we'll help you trade into a new truck so got to give a shout out to the boys especially in the service department over at classic chevrolet uh for number one watching the videos and then number two helping me out with the truck i told them it was in a tight spot i was like man i gotta i gotta get back on the dangle man can you help me can you help me out they went above and beyond it's something i didn't even think about was like moving all the stuff i had on the other truck because i had the cap i had the lift i had tires you know i had all these accessories bumpers running running boards all that stuff they got everything moved over and exactly in place it is a brand new engine i even got a sunroof that's, a, that's about the only thing that's different um oh and the interior the interior is dark you know the other one was like tan but you know i've got sunroof we can get in touch with the stars or the get the texas sun beating down on us more than it already is but anyway that, that's all the same LTZ package. Running boards, wah-bam. Got our fender flares, wah-bam. Hooked up tires and rims. Those tires are expensive, you know, so moving those over helped out a ton. Truck cap installed very nicely, by the way. They even cleaned the tires, shined them up, made them look brand new. Shout out to uh, Joe and also Toby in the sales department. Let's get in this puppy, start it up. I mean, it is just a Toaster oven. Got a little bit more light coming in here. Look at that. Air conditioned seats in Texas. I can tell you that's an upgrade. That's a major upgrade. Some of y'all are probably thinking if you had that many problems with that truck, why are you getting the exact same thing? Like, 
don't you want to move on to something else that you know is more reliable? That is a good point, my dear friend. But after you've seen the performance out of this size truck with pulling a boat, which I have behind me like 70% of the time, and just overall the torque, like the torque in this little truck, I don't want to switch. If worse came to worse and like all these little 3.0 Duramaxes were having issues, then yeah, I'd probably step up to like an L5P 2500, you know, the 6.6 .6 liter Duramax that is, you know, there's tons of information on it. Everyone knows that engine works, it's super powerful, but man, the truck's so big. It is so big, it's cumbersome. To, to get around, it's cumbersome to, to park. You know, I fish in a lot of urban situations. I wanna be able to maneuver uh, the truck, park things easier, it's a rougher ride. There's just, a, there's a lot of negatives. Whereas like the 1500 I feel is perfect size. Colorado, too small, not enough. Not enough room for all of my gear. Some people get like a 2500 just for towing and then they'll have like a Colorado or something. And instead, you know, they got room for that and you know have money to spend on it whatever but i think this is the perfect mixture if you're just looking for that one truck daily driver and then you're getting i get 15 to 17 miles to the gallon pulling my my bass boat which is crazy and then without it i'm getting like 28 29 miles to the gallon so that's super efficient like my wife's car for example you know her volkswagen it gets like 20 miles to the gallon also, you're getting that torque, and once you experience the torque, I'm telling you, it's hard to go back to gas. And the guys at the dealership straight up told me, like, if you, if you switch over to a gas engine, your gas mileage is going to go way down. And they make a 6.2 liter in the Chevy that gets just as much torque, it gets way more horsepower, so you've got that, you know, nice th throttle response, getting up on the highway, going mud and, you know, doing whatever, you can tow with it, but... Uh, it's just not as efficient and it's not putting out the torque at a low RPM. That's the whole thing with a diesel. Like, I forget what, how much how much more it is to upgrade. I think it's 2,600 bucks or 3,000 bucks for the 6.2 liter gas or a 3.0 diesel. But with the diesel, you're just getting way more tor torque at a lower RPM. If you're not trying to you know win street races, if you're towing stuff around, a lot like me, easy choice. I liked it so much that's why I chose to get into the exact same truck. I'm going to take her for a little spin. I mean, it's literally got less than 100 miles on it. So far so good. This has a, a 10 speed transmission so it's really smooth but man that other one it felt like woo! I feel like somebody threw a log down underneath the wheels. It's crazy. We will definitely put it through its paces. And like I told you guys, when I first started making videos about this truck, like I'm, I'm gonna let you know what's going on. And I and I have, okay, the good, bad, and the ugly, and the ugliest. But there's also something in the back of my truck right now that's kind of like a nice addition to the truck. I'm gonna show you. So of course all the cameras and stuff on this thing are awesome too. I um, mean, you know, I think a lot of the other models have that, so that's not like a crazy thing. It's something I like about the truck. But you know, I'm always looking for the next advantage in the outdoors. Ever since I started going like truck camping, it's it's kind of addicting. Like you, you just, I don't know, you guys gotta try it. If you're, if you haven't been truck camping, take the fam, go do it, it's fun. Found something really cool. Actually, John B. introduced me to uh, this right here. This is a cooler, it's made by Dometic. And this, uh, this is basically a refrigerator slash uh, freezer. So you can have whatever in here. You know, you don't have to use the ice. It is electronically powered and is a very efficient system. So I'm not sure. I don't know any of the technical data on it, but it's it just kind of sips the power and I'm actually testing it out right now. So uh, Dometic sent me one of these actually. Um, so thank you Dometic for doing that. It's really nice, but you know, hey, go ahead and get me a cold water out of here. You know, I can rough it. I can go up on a mountain, sleep up there for a week, but I'm taking the wife, taking the baby, taking the family. We need some accoutrements going on. So I'm doing some testing and I like that it just sips the power. So we just hook this up to the the, the, uh, the Jackery and put it on the, the DC power. 
Uh, I think it's a little bit more efficient with the DC power. Uh, so that's just like your regular car plug-in. I've had this on all day. And there's another power cell that I've got from Dometic. And I, I went through that yesterday afternoon through the night. And so it's at 70%. It was at 90 this morning. So it'll definitely get all the way through the day. And then I can use a solar panel to charge this and then it'll uh, just keep it rolling. So I can actually switch out uh, the battery power cells from the Dometic to the Jackery one and just keep the coolness flowing. So another addition, what we're gonna be adding onto this uh, adventure wagon is a camper, or not a camper, we already have the camper. We're gonna be adding a rack to this. And let me tell you guys something about trying to go get a truck accessories right now. It is insane. The market everyone is like wanting to go camping the wanting to go adventuring i'm sorry about the uh the shirtless dudes in the background let me scoot over here sorry about that it's a 60 day waiting period for one of the things i want to get on top of this truck which is a it's a rhino rack um, it's basically like a flat top it'll go all the way it's not just the racks like i had on on the old tundra it's an actual like flat rack and you can put anything up there it'd be great for the kayak it'll be great for just putting um extra gear putting you know, a cooler up there if you wanted to, extra diesel, uh, water, whatever, stuff like that, you know, when you're going on your adventures. So that's the next thing, but that is gonna take a while, apparently, because everyone is tricking out their vehicles, everyone's doing home projects right now. And then I guess uh, we're going to add some lights up to the top and, and really trick it out with some, some lighting. And that's gonna be about it. That's about all I can think of. It's gonna be fully ready and rigged for uh, when it cools down, we start doing more camping hunting, all of that stuff. Technology these days. Technology that you can put into your vehicle, your boat, just the entire outdoor industry has come a long ways since I started my dangle. Back at the tree house. Transmission issue free. I gotta feed the chickens, y'all. Gather the eggs for the day. Look at them. They're getting excited. They know, they know what's coming. The flock party is coming. Right, get your heads out of there. Get your hands out of there, girl. Get your head out. There we go. Get you some. Get you some. Old Ebenezer, he's gotta give him a handful. He'll come on in, there you go. Just get you some there, boy. Heat up there, boy. He is a ferocious eater. Look at him. Chickens are like really precise, you know, they'll take their beaks and they just like get the one specific thing they want and then, you know, the duck just blah, 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 he just comes in there, bulldozes it with his bill. So normally this time of day we have two eggs. Our hens have started laying a little bit later, or laying hens. Oh my, we only have one egg. What is going on here? Do we not have another egg? We do not. Normally I pick up two eggs out of here every day, I'm not kidding. This is so strange to be in the afternoon and only have have one. But we are at a spring going into summer, and then eventually in the winter, uh, the egg production will slow down quite a bit. But speaking of that, these hens right here, y'all, they're basically full grown. This barred rock right here, she will get all up in your business, hand feeding. You can see like these, like a Easter egger, wants nothing to do with it. Just nothing to do with the ducks, all over it. The wine dot, very timid. Yeah, the, even the other bard rock, I mean, he'll, he'll get in there. She'll get in there. But if you guys are thinking about getting chick chickens, bard rocks, Plymouth bard rocks, reds, like this one right here, they're super friendly and they're really easy to handle. Like I can, I can grab them, I can pick them up. Just makes it easy for animal husbandry. Easter eggers, I don't know what it is, but they just, they are like wild hawks. Just give me a treat, let me eat it out of your hand, the easy way. Which I think is pretty cool, you know, it's really good for for kids, like Emmy. And then you got the duck. Yep, he's always down. He's always down for a mealworm munch and sesh. Our other seven chickens will be laying here in another month. So we're looking at potentially getting anywhere from seven to nine eggs a day, five to five to nine, five to nine eggs a day, we'll, we'll say conservatively, um, nine in the spring months and heading into summer and then late fall, winter, we'll have 
a little less eggs, but that is a lot of eggs. And what's really cool, they're gonna be all different kinds of colors. Really nice, real, real nice eggs, all different kinds of colors. And just to let y'all know where my head's at on adventure camping with the truck, I've been salivating to get the truck back. So glad I got it out. While I haven't had it, I've been uh, preparing for my adventures. So really want to get the rack on top so I can get some of this, some of this gear up there, space it out a little bit, preparing for elk season as well. Let's not forget that. And honestly, it's been so hot here. It's the water's boiling out there. So fishing is so tough during the middle of the day. I spent my time, you know, during the hot hours packing up, getting ready, getting ready for the adventures. Always got to prepare in the mind. And we are going to sign it off for today's vlog, checking out the new, new truck and just getting ready for the next adventure, y'all. So thank you for tuning in for every single episode here on the channel. Don't forget to go watch Unthawed, The Great Northern Dangle. Link down below. Subscribe right here so you don't miss a single episode. I'll see you guys next time. God bless you.